dialing it up, dialing it. Okay, is that, that's what we're going to have. All right, I'm Allison Sheridan. This is my Mac Tiny Tips workshop. And as I said, we're going to make your life easier. Here, scan that barcode or QR code. The, uh, this will do an injection of some code into your website to uh, steal your information. Um, what this is going to do is take you to the first blog post I did entitled Mac Tiny Tips 1. And at the bottom of Mac Tiny Tips 1, once you get done reading all those, you go to Tiny Tips 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So what I'm going to try to do is see how many of these I can get through in uh, uh, 90 minutes. We've got, I've got like 35 of them here, but there's like another 47 on, the, uh, on those websites. But everything I'm going to show you today is already documented on the, uh, on the website. So uh, now let's talk about why I did the Mac Tiny Tips. This is, this is my last chart, actually. So Jill from the Northwoods, hiding under the table in the front row, is a switcher. She recently switched from Windows to the Mac, and she was a, uh, a Mac or a Sys admin. I just realized I'm not because I'm mirroring. I don't have my show notes. My this notes. is a smooth start. Do I start over so it's a good recording? Nah. Yeah. Is that any better? Turn the audio off. Audio off. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, but you're still recording. All right, there we go. Yeah, I tried out for the uh, school musical uh, Oklahoma in high school, and uh, I tripped on my way up on stage, and I sang my little heart out, and all the choral director said was, my, you project well. <laughs> <laughs> but that turned into a strength, right? So back to Jill from the Northwood. So Jill was a switcher from, she was hoping I'd forgotten. Uh, she's a switcher from Windows to the Mac, and she was a, a sysadmin for, uh, for Windows, and so she was an aficionado. I mean, she knew every single little trick. And when she switched to the Mac, she very quickly became a user. And that's not where she wanted to be. She wanted to up her game. And I thought, well, what if I just start teaching all the little tiny things that I know how to do? There are a lot of these you might already know. In fact, if you want to keep a, a little score for yourself of, I knew that, and, huh, that's cool. I didn't know I could do that. That would be fun. If anybody gets all I knew that, I don't want to hear from them. So, uh, but uh, but I, you will know some of these things, but I, I'm fairly sure you won't know all of them. So I'm going to try to go through as many of these as I can. Like I said, I've got like 35 that I've taken notes to myself to remind myself how I do these tips, but everything is documented over at podfeet.com. And I think, yeah, there's 32 more after that. So with that, I'm going to sit down and close that off and we're going to start. So I've got a piece of paper here because that works forever. Can you still hear me when I'm sitting down? Yes. Not quite as good. All right, you should have sat closer. So <laughs> the first tip I want to show is if you open your applications folder, actually any folder with a lot of files in it, one of the things that is annoying is trying to find a file. Uh, a file. So I'm just using applications so I don't show you like my, my medical history or something like that. If That's really small, isn't it? I don't think I can change the resolution. Can you guys see that at all? No, yes or no. All right. Okay, so it's okay. So let's say I want to find the application tail scale. I can scroll all the way down to tail scale. Go, 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 go. Okay, I can get down to the T's where I am. Okay, there's tail scale. And that's tedious. I don't want to spend that in my life doing stuff like that. So what I'm going to do instead is you can just type a letter. So I could type the letter T and that got me to tail scale. So that's cool. You jump right to it just by typing a letter. But it turns out, like what if I wanted to get to Slack? If I type an S, it takes me to Safari. Well, what if I, it turns out you can do two letters. So I can type SL and that takes me directly to Slack. And you can actually do three characters. So if I wanted to get to, I've got an application on here called Keycaster, which I think I meant to have running. Uh, if I type KE, it gets me to keep it, keyboard, then keycaster. But if I go KEY, it takes me to keyboard maestro. So I get a lot closer. So you can do one character, two characters, three characters. I've never been able to go fast enough to get four characters. But that's a quick way to search your files. There we go. One tiny tip. I promise they were tiny, right? One of the other things uh, that Mac or uh, Windows users really miss is the ability to do a true delete. And uh, let me bring up what file did I say I was going to bring up? Uh, I've got, uh, I'm going to open up text. Actually, let me close this. I'm going to just open up text edit. And I'm going to make a new file. And let's change this font to something ginormous. And actually, let me make sure Keycaster is running because Keycaster should 
show you keystrokes. There we go. Now you should be able to see what I'm doing here. So if I say hello world here, if let's say I'm, I'm next to the W. In Windows, you can hit a delete key and it would delete the W. But on the Mac, you know, if I hit the delete key, it goes back. But if I hold down Control D, it goes forward. So you can do a, a true delete forward using Control D. I might have had to add a laugh track or a clap track or something at the end of each one. <laughs> oh, Steve's got a question. Your key caster is showing because you, you uh, zoomed in. I'm sorry? Do your control character, it's out of the frame because you zoomed in. I haven't done that. Hey, Roger? Oh, there you go. Let's see. There's a balance here. There you go. OK, good. Yeah, that's just enough. Good, thank you for letting me know. So anyway, that's the end of tip number two. We're flying through these. Anybody got a score of two yet? <laughs> Let's uh, I'll quit this. Oh, that was a tiny tip. I just missed showing you that. I'm going to skip ahead and do that. I'll come back to it. I've got it in my list here. Um, let's see. I'm going to open a file name on the desktop. Let's say, actually, let's go to the desktop. And I've got the name of my, my file here that I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to show a tiny tip before I, I do it here. Ooh, look at that, huh? Huh? Look at what I just did. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, if I will actually know in order to see the bottom left, I might need to do that. If you want to rename a file, when you first select it, it's going to be all dark blue or blue or whatever color palette you've chosen. But if you hit the enter key, it immediately selects the whole thing. Now you can just start typing over that. You don't have to select it again or hit backspace. That would just completely rename it, which I won't do to my presentation. Actually, maybe I should do this on a less dan dangerous file. Uh, so I hit enter and I've got the name of the file and I can just start typing, right? Let me do a command Z. Why? Okay, I'm not. That didn't show the command Z. That's kind of weird. Okay, so I undid that. But now let's say I would just, a lot of times I just want to put like say Rev A at the end of something. If I simply hit the right arrow key, it hops right to the end and I can type Rev A. Same thing if I hit enter, and I hit it again. If I hit the left arrow, it jumps right to the front to be able to say, now this is going to be a file 01 Mac demo files. Quick, easy way to get right to the file name, change it and hit enter. Now, if you can't remember uh, to hit enter, if you select it once, ah, keep scrolling over. If you simply select it a second time, it actually selects the whole thing too. So if you forget that it's enter, just touch, touch it again, but don't touch it too quick. Just touch it and then touch it again. Quick way to rename files. Why is that? I see the keycaster thing at the bottom. What's that? It looks like it's very showing. Yeah, I don't know why. You're zoomed in too much. No, I'm not. I'm not zoomed in. And it's not on my screen either. Maybe keycaster is, is being silly. This is an open source app I just downloaded and it was working okay. Why did you just, let's try this again. Oh, I'm starting to talk quieter, aren't I? Yeah. All right, hello. All right, control D, there it's back. So on that tiny tip, if you do the one touch, the two touch, it's just the, the pre-name, it's not the extension. Steve just asked if when you, when you do the, the touch and the enter or the touch a second time, it's just the, everything but the file extension. So the nice thing is it doesn't write over the file extension and bork everything up. Good question. Oh yeah, you guys can stop me and ask questions anytime you want. I can, I can roll with it. So if there's uh, anything like that you want to know about, that's, uh, that's not a problem. If you have any questions. All right. That's now working famously. All right, let's open up preview for a minute. And I'm going to hit Command N to do a, a new file. Oh, I guess I had that open. That was, must have been in my clipboard. One of the things that drives me nuts is when I know something is in a menu, but I can't remember where it is. I, and, and I sit there and I go across, I look at each one of the menus, and I'm like, I, I don't see it. I don't see where it is. In pretty much most Apple applications, applications that have been written well according to the, the official specs, if you uh, go in there and let's see, oh, this is a great one. I can open up the, uh, the little markup toolbar, hitting that button, and then I can go over here, and I can click on this, and I can go to oval, and it dropped an oval in. That's really, really tedious. With this closed, you can go up into the menu bar, and you can type anything you are searching for, whoop, if you spell it right, O-V-A-L, 
And when I hover down over where it found it, it not only shows me where it is, I mean, with a big sarcastic blue arrow, hey, fool, you can't read that, it's right there. I actually discovered this particular command because I was gonna teach this. I was like, what can I search for? I'm like, wow, I didn't know you could go straight to that. So I don't even have the annotation thing down. I can now go down to it, I can click it, and immediately I've got the oval dropped in. And that works like, you know, I've got some odd applications that are like, uh, what are the web apps called, Adam? The, um, uh, there's a name for it. When they're on this certain platform, they've been built. They're, they're cross-platform. Anybody remember? Anybody remember what those are called? Well, anyway, I've got a couple of applications like that. And so they don't follow the standard APIs. You may not have the help thing where you can actually search, but most stuff really has it. And it's, uh, somebody holler that name out when they remember what it is. What's that? Catalyst? No, that's close though. Electron. electron. Who got electron? All right, Shane. <laughs> Shane wins the I knew that prize. Good. Anyway, I, I use that all the time. I, I use uh, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, and there's like 400 menus. I don't know where anything is in that, and I don't use them often enough to remember. So all the time, I just go and I just type out that I want the live filter for Gaussian blur or whatever. I type in blur, and it's like, oh, here it is, and it points an arrow at me. So I don't even bother to remember those things because they're already there. All right, um, what's next? Oh, so one of the things I've been doing is if I hit Command Q, you see how this, I'm gonna jump ahead a, a, uh, a tip. When you see this menu, the, the close menu, where you're, you're given the option to save. If I hit enter, that's gonna save that file, it's gonna save it wherever it thinks it should be saved. But a lot of times I open up stuff, I do something, and I just wanna delete it right away. Well, I hate using the mouse to go all the way down here to the, the de delete key. Turns out if you hold down Command and hit delete, it closes without saving. Want to see that one again? <laughs> or just command delete is, is the way to do it. You'll see me do it a lot more times because evidently it was later in the tips, but apparently I use that more often than I, I thought I did. All right, next tip, we are flying. Better ask some questions, it's going faster than I thought. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So I said, I, my notes say to go into the Mac demo folder. Where to go? This one, that one. Okay. And I'm going to also open the Mac stop spare folder here because I'm going to bring some stuff in here. So let's say I want to move a file from, uh, here's my little true delete uh, example I was going to show, but I want to move a file from here to here. So I've got this file, this open, and I got to get this. And then it's like, okay, let me move this full, this window down here. And maybe you've got a smaller screen and you can't fit it in. And then you take that and you drag it over here to the Mac stop spare folder. That's kind of tedious to have to do that. So it turns out, let's say if I open this one and I've got this one opened, I don't even have to bring that, that uh, folder, whoop, you gotta select it though. I don't have to actually bring that folder to the foreground. I can hold it and pause and do it, or I don't even have to hold and pause and wait for it to come up. You can simply drag it and let go and it's already in there and it didn't even bring it back to the foreground. Kind of a neat way to do it. You can also do this uh, if I, let's see, let me open the MaxDoc spare folder as a new tab. No, I told you new tab, didn't I? Oh, I did do that one. Okay, let's open that as a new tab. So now I've got these two folders and I wanna move a file from here over to here. I can simply go to these, where'd the M go? Boy, I was playing around with that, wasn't I? So I can take true delete and I can just drop it up onto that tab and let go and I can move it that way too. So you don't even have to have the tabs open into separate windows to be able to do that. All right, how's my projection doing? Anybody still hear me? All right, good. <laughs> Mike's excited. All right, let's keep going. Oh. I don't know what it is, and maybe you're like me, maybe you're not like me, but I hate clicking the trackpad. I know it's not a true click. I know it's not actually, you guys know that, that the trackpad isn't a real click. It's if, if you power your laptop down, or, your, or your, uh, if you've got a separate magic trackpad, if you, if you uh, um, shut it down, it doesn't actually click, because it's actually this haptic feedback that's going on. It's, fake, it's a fake click, it's not moving. I'm not breaking anything by using it too much, but for some reason, I just, 
hate to do it. I don't, it just bugs me to do it. And uh, I set this up on everybody's computer that if I'm even touching your computer to help you do something, I'll turn it on because it'll drive me crazy. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In system set, ooh, system settings, there you go. And we're gonna go into, let me make sure I remember where it is. All right, we're gonna scroll all the way down here to trackpad. And then it's tap to click right here. I turn this on because I don't wanna click. So now when I'm tapping, I'm actually doing it without actually clicking the trackpad. Now that's, that's, part, that's step one. That's the first one that I'll, I'll always do. But I also turn on secondary tap with two fingers. So instead of having to hold down the control key to tap to, to do a contextual menu, I can just tap with two fingers. And I really, really like that one. But the last one I like is I don't want to click, the one I really hate is click and drag a window around. This is just like, it's so easy to let go of it when you're trying to move something, it's too hard. You would think that, uh, well, so there's an option to have a three fingered tap. And you would think it would be in this menu, but you would be wrong. Because I think Apple wants us to look at the accessibility menu. That's all I can figure why so many things are in accessibility. I mean, this one's kind of accessibility. But if you go into accessibility, let me make sure I get there quickly. Go down to pointer control. Where's pointer control? No, I don't see it. There it is, pointer control. And then you go into trackpad options. And then you have to turn on trackpad for dragging. So but when you default, it'll look like this. You go in and use, use trackpad for dragging, and then you can use three finger drag, or there's a couple of other options. But with three finger drag now, I can take my three fingers, and you'll notice that little red circle still showing I'm doing it, but I, trust me, my fingers are just going like this. I'm just dragging for, back and forth moving it. And I just find that a much more relaxing way to use my laptop. And I'm a big trackpad user. I use an external trackpad at home, and I just love it. Okay, anybody know that one? Any questions? What did you do with the two finger? What was the two finger thing? Oh, the two finger is instead of, ha uh, for contextual menus, like a right click. Gotcha. Yeah, so that was back in trackpad. And what do, they, what do they call it? They call it secondary click. The, mouse, the, the right mouse click that Steve Jobs said we were never allowed to have and we didn't need, right? Yay windows. <laughs> yes, yay windows, <laughs> yeah. Well, you can buy a mouse for the Mac that does it. Yeah. How sensitive is the tap to click? I think it's perfect sensitive, Adam. Adam says, <laughs> so that is definitely something to keep in mind is I, I, all of these are things that make me happy that I like to do and you can accept one or none of them. Adam's sitting up here being, I know everything front row as one would expect, but uh, it's, it's a preference. I know people who like to click, I can't stand it. Just bugs the Mine daylight. His wife loves it, so it's right, in other words, is what you're saying. So if you drop a piece of paper, Ron's asking, does it have to be your finger? Ron's asking whether it has to be your finger. I don't know. Let me see. No, nope, it has to be your finger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not super sensitive. If you're the type of person where you kind of lift your finger when you're trying to drag around, you, you can accidentally hit it. Okay. Adam's saying if you're the kind of finger who's, you got a twitchy trigger finger, you could, uh, you could mess it up. Good questions, I like this. I like it more interactive. I feel silly when I'm just talking and you guys aren't interacting, so keep it up, it's good. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna open up, uh, where's my delete, me, my delete me file, where was that? Where'd the M go? Wait, let me do this. I can hit my left arrow and put the M in Mac stock back, there it goes. So let's see, I was gonna do, I was gonna do this one. Oh no, actually no. That's not where I was gonna go next. One of the things you'll notice in my, in my windows here is that across the bottom, you can see the path to the files. And this is a really handy feature. Let me, let me zoom in on that. You can see exactly where I've stored that file. And the way you get that on your files is going up to, in Finder, going to view, show, or hide path bar. So I can, by default, it's turned off, but if you turn it on, this thing has a lot of features you can use. For example, I can take true delete, let's say this was a, a real buried folder somewhere. I could take true delete and I could actually drag it to the desktop by going like that. And you see it just moved over to there. So this, this path bar isn't just a visual, you can do things for it, with it. And one of the, uh, one of the nerdy things you can do with it is you can, 
do a two finger tap. I did not have to click, Adam. I can, I can pull down and I can say open in terminal. And I've immediately got that file open in the terminal. You can see if I do a PWD, it shows I'm in uh, Mac stack demo files. I thought that was cool when I learned that one. Uh, so Ron is making a snarky comment about our perfectly lovely Windows brethren and sistren. Uh, is, is that a nod? Can I finish, Adam? I'm actually the one on stage. Sorry. You'll get your turn. That's okay. Uh, Adam and I go way back. <laughs> so the, uh, the question was whether that was a nod to our Windows, our Windows friends. I, I don't know, honestly. I don't know when this came in, whether it was a copied feature, but my personal opinion is if Windows has something cool and then we get it, that's a good thing. And if they get something cool and we had it, that we had, that's a good thing. The whole wars of what's better does it. I don't know. I, I'm uninterested in the battle anymore and, and being, I mean, we know the Mac is better, but we don't have to shove it in their faces. So I, I, don't, uh, I don't worry too much about that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, we finished that one. All right. Oh, this one's crazy. So I'm going to use... I'll teach you about the sidebar in a minute, but one of my things I do is I create folders and subfolders and folders. You see how deep I've got this stuff? Uh, this is, you can see on the path bar that it's just got so much information. Uh, Roger? Yeah, they don't need to see me. So across the bottom, you can see this is iCloud Drive documents, PodFeet, no silicast, no silicast weekly files, no silicast holding storage analysis. This is just a buried thing that I go to all the time. And let's say I wanted to save a file there. So I'm going to open up my, uh, uh, let's open up my uh, spare demo files here. We'll open up true delete again. And let's say I wanted to do a, a save as. Well, let's, let's show one little tip that I'm probably getting ahead. You notice that there's only save. There is only save. It turns out if you hold down the option key, you can do save as, as nature intended. <laughs> I would like to have that back permanently. Thank you very much. But anyway, so I'm going to hit save as, and by default, it's going to go back to the same place. But what if I want it to go into this folder that I have open? Like it's already open on my desktop. I don't want to drill down and down and down and down and all the way into there. Well, at the top of the window, you can see it says storage analysis. So that's the folder name. But if I hover over it for a minute, it shows something called a window title icon. It's also called a proxy icon by nerds. So it turns out if I hover over that and then I grab that and I move it into the save as window, I can now save as directly into that deep, 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 deep folder. OK, we got a new on that one. Finally, we got a good one. I love that. I, I use this all the time. Good, good. So. Why should you have to hover to get that thing? It used to be there all the time and they took it out. But because you paid the low, low price of admission to this, you're gonna find out that you can turn that on permanently. Let me have my notes up so I remember where to do it. Uh, let's see, system settings. Hey, let's take a guess. Where do you think they buried it? Accessibility. accessibility, that's right, because that's obviously an accessibility thing. Let's see, can I go straight to accessibility? Oh, look, I can with uh, Spotlight. Go straight to accessibility. And then where did they bury it? I know I could find it, but I'm going to go slow. Okay, believe it or not, it's in display. Where's display? It's looking right at me in it. Displays. No, that's not right. Sorry, we were in accessibility. I was supposed to go to displays from there. Display. And then is it in here? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Hang on. First block. First block. Okay. Uh, Easier to be going. Uh, where is it? Show window title icons. So watch it magically appear when I turn this on. Show window title icons. And now it's always there and you don't have to hover for it. It's been driving me crazy this week. I turned it off so I could be sure to turn it on in front of you and it wasn't there and it was driving me nuts. Yes. You can search in the system settings. Yes, you can search. Can you find it in the system settings when you search? I, 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 I do like doing searches. So he say if I just brought up, um, if I brought up system settings, what would I search for? So if I wanted window title icon, and there it is. So he's right, that, that one is in there, good. Uh, but I don't find it's there as often as I want it to be. 
Uh, I do start with search because it's such a mess in there, but I, I think they said they're rearranging system settings, right? Or was it only on the on the iPhone? I forget. But iOS 18 and macOS, whatever it is, Sequoia is going to have. Uh, I think it's going to have that where we can. It's going to be redesigned. So don't bother looking it all up. By the way, for anybody who hasn't been following me forever, I once mind mapped all of the system of the system settings or system preferences at the time. It was in iOS 11. It took me three and a half weeks to mind map all of it. I put you in Do Not Disturb. Uh, anyway, that that that's quite an epic thing to see. All right, we got an ooh out of that one. That's good. Oh, here's a fun one. Let's open up. Uh, let's open up Safari, and I think I'm online. And let's go to I don't know some random website, Podfeet.com, and uh, let's go to something nice and long. Let's find a nice long blog post. Uh, here we go. All right. Physics shorts, yeah, anybody wants to learn about physics shorts, that's a fun thing. So if I want to get to the bottom of this page, I can scroll, I can scroll, I write a lot. I can scroll and I can scroll and I can scroll and I can scroll, uh, that's pretty good. So there's actually an arrow here I can go back to the top, but it turns out you can go to the bottom or top of most pages in most apps with command down arrow. Ooh, command up arrow. Did everybody already know that one? Command down arrow, command up arrow. I'm actually, I think I'm doing that one twice. I think that's in the talk next, uh, on Sunday too. But uh, I use this all the time. And that also works in, uh, in preview. Let me see, I think in my, uh, let's see. Oh, did I just drag something out? That's not good. Um, in my demo files, did I preview? Yeah. So this also works in preview. Go to the bottom, go to the top, go to the bottom, go to the top. I use that all day long. All right. Really? You can use function up and down to go one screen up and down instead of All right, my new friend of the back says to try function down arrow. So that's one page. I think you can do that with, what is it? You can, you can also just do it with a space bar to just go down a chunk at a time. You don't need the function key. Yeah, but if you're in a document, you're actually editing. So she says if you're in a document, you're uh, actually editing, you would want to use function. That, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good example. Yeah, I like it. I love teaching because I learn so much when other people tell me what they know how to do. This is great. I did a talk on, uh, um, actually I did nine talks on a cruise in Australia, you know, on a Mac Mania cruise. And I, nine 80 minute, uh, sorry, eight 90 minute talks I had to plan. I like to talk, but man, that's a, that's a lot of information to gather together. So I really only had about 45 minutes worth, but the audience got into telling me stuff I didn't know. And so it just became like this group participation and like what we're doing now. So this is great. I love it. I did not know function down arrow. I'm, I'm excited. That's a good one. Thank you very much. I can't see who's back there. They're hiding behind uh, Brian. <laughs> great. All right. What's next? Oh, you may have noticed that in my sidebar, I've got a whole lot of stuff. Let's get rid of all these. I've got a bunch of stuff in my sidebar. And it turns out you can drag stuff in and out and up and down anytime you like into the sidebar. So I do stuff like uh, I'm going to Mac stock. Well, I need my Mac stock folder. Well, you can see that's buried in Google Drive, My Drive, Travel, Mac stocks, Mac stock 2014. I don't have to drill down and get to it during this week. But when I'm, when I'm done with the trip, I can just drag it back out. Uh, we just went to Hawaii, but sadly that trip is over. So if I drag it out and I wait until it gets a little X on it and I let go, it just disappears. But I can take another one, like let's say I want my presentation available. I can take that and I can drag it back in and you can see the little line there and you can move it up and down. You can, you can actually put it inside something, which I don't want to do, but I'll let go. And now it's in my sidebar. So the whole time I'm working on my presentation, I can have that in my left sidebar and I can get in and out of it, but I can get rid of it when I want to. Another thing I use it for is, at least for my podcast, I've got uh, new files coming in every week. So Nocillacast Audio 2024, when I do my recordings, they all go into this folder and I need to be able to get in and out of that folder quickly. So I keep that in the sidebar. I mentioned Nocillacast Weekly uh, Files. This was the, uh, the folder for last week or two days ago, whatever it was, Wednesday I published early. So I've got this week's uh, podcast folder of where I'm putting recordings and text and, and documents that I need for the podcast for that week. And then when I'm done with it, like right now, I'm just gonna drag it out and get, whoop, no, didn't wait for the X, drag it out, wait for the X, and now it's gone. I use this constantly. I'm constantly changing this. I keep it alphabetical because that's the way nature intended it, down to a certain point. 
Um, one of the most useful things to put in your sidebar is your library folder. I don't find I have to go in there nearly as much as I used to. Seems like I used to always have to go in and mess with P lists and things, so maybe it's not as important as before. But if you go up to view, uh, is it view? No, window, go. If you go to, to the go menu, you want, you want to get to the library, it's not in there. If you hold down the option key, look, there it is. The option key does all kinds of magic, so you can still get to the library folder from the, from the go menu if you hold down the option key. I wonder, yeah, does it, do we still need the library folder in our sidebar? I'm trying to remember the last time I went in there. I used to go in there all the time. All right, you know what? I want some room in my library folder. It's gone. That easy. Next week, I'm going to need it. <laughs> does it. Do other people, does it, other people use the sidebar a lot like that? Drag things in and out? Yeah, question. Oh, just yes. Okay, good. All right. So a good tip, but everybody knew that one. All right, you saw me earlier, I said, ooh, look what I can do, I can zoom in and out. Look at that. I did this during a presentation probably, man, it might be 20 years ago, and the audience went wild because they'd never seen it before. Take a guess at where you do this. Accessibility, say it everybody. If you go into accessibility and then zoom, there's a thing here that says use scroll gesture. Let me zoom in on this to show it to you. I love that it works with a projector too. Use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. So you turn that on. Oh, it just disappeared because I just finished, because I turned it off, that's cool. So I turn it on and then you can choose what keystroke combination. The, the default is control, but I'm using control and then two fingers on my trackpad. I assume there's a magic mouse equivalent to that, probably just one finger on the, on the uh, thing on it. But I use this all the time and I'll tell you, I'm going to use this line tomorrow too, but anybody in here getting older? Anybody? Show of hands? Well, you hope so, right? <laughs> you hope to get older. That's the best thing. But my pet peeve is when you go into maps and you're like, okay, we're here in, in uh, about an hour. This is going to finish coming up. But when it, when it comes up, it's going to show me the street name, right? But I can't read it because it's too small. So what do you do? You hit the plus button. What does it do? It shrinks it down again. Well, imagine that the map was actually coming up on Wi-Fi here, but you can just, oh, there it is, there it is. So right now, where is our blue dot? Uh, where am I? There's my blue dot. I can zoom in, so I can't read that, that name there, but I can zoom in and go, oh, that's Three Oaks Road. It's magical. If, if you do it for nothing other than maps, do it for that one. Apple needs more old people. Apple needs more old people. Don't they, though? Jeez, yeah, yes. So, yeah, Marina is asking whether that's the same as when you pinch and zoom, and it, it's not. So if I pinch and zoom on this map, they're going to keep shrinking that text down so I can't read it. So, oh, so this is actually zooming in. On it's the, the entire screen. screen. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it, right, right, right. It's on the whole screen. And let's go into that again because uh, accessibility and zoom. Could I have searched for this one? That's a good question. So you can do different ways of zooming in too. So what I choose is full screen. So the whole thing is just zooming in and out like you see. But there's a couple of other options. You can use split screen. And this is a little freaky, but like, let's say I want to read Northwest. I'm going to control scroll right there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, okay, I see what it's doing, but it's sort of funky. But it turns out you can also take this. Wait a minute there, how do you do it? I wrote, the, it's in my notes here, you have to. Oh, I only wrote down, you can change the size and location of this. So you can grab this thing here. Oh man, that's freaky. Now, I don't think I can. I swear, I grabbed that little edge down at the bottom and I changed the size and I actually was able to move it. But yeah, no, I've got it. It really doesn't like that now. All right, we're gonna scroll back out. I saw, thought I found a way to move it and maybe I was holding a character down, maybe a command or something. Actually, let's try that one more time. Let me try it one more. Maybe I used, no, Commander. Uh, so it's, I think it's in the settings. So when, you, when you're selecting that split screen option, there is a button next to it that says size and location. Ah, there she's right. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, now I can take it and I can put it on, no? Yeah. I got to, how do I grab it? Go to the bar. In the, in the You'll that bar? Yeah. No? Oh, I'm not still in size and location. Okay, back in size and location. Now I should be able to grab that. You would say, 
Oh, maybe I just, uh, hang on one more time. I got another idea. What if I just drag anywhere in the bar? There's the hand he's talking about. Okay, so pull it over the side. There we go, from any side. And you can take this edge and you can increase it so it's even weirder looking, and then you can hit okay. I find that one difficult. I, I, I'm not real comfortable with that, but there's a third option that might be good is picture in picture. So if I just scroll up like I'm right here, it's just gonna zoom that little piece. And that one's not bad. That, one, that one's not as head bendy to me. But I like that they give you three different options and you can experiment with it and see which one you like, whether you like it or not. Um, there's also a whole bunch of advanced controls. Actually, uh, since I'm not comfortable with that one, I'm gonna go back to full screen and go into advanced. And you can change like what happens, the, the image moves when the pointer reaches the edge. So you see I'm moving my cursor over, it's moving with me. If that bugs you, you can say, keep the pointer centered or continuously with the pointer. Oh, I bet that's irpy. Oh yeah, no, I'm not doing that one. I don't even know if I can get back to where it was. Um, resume, you just, smooth images, there's just a ton of different controls, maximum zoom. You know, go to town in this one if you wanna really tailor it to what you need. So yeah, maybe they don't need more old people. They gave us some controls for old people, but I live in that accessibility me menu. Yes? Um, this also works on iPad and iOS as well. You can do three finger, swipe up, zoom in, swipe down. And it's great on iPad if something is pillar boxed on Netflix or whatever, and you can zoom the four by three content and fill the entire screen. All right, I'm hearing from the back of the room that you can't see this, but I'm gonna try it. You're saying three finger, uh, do you have to turn it on in accessibility? All right, so you can't see my screen, but I'm gonna go into, where do you think? We'll go into accessibility and then, and then in zoom. And I don't wanna zoom on. Well, maybe we'll leave this one for the student, but they said that you could zoom in with three fingers up and down on the iPad. So I could see maps on my iPad? Exactly. No, how about, how about, on, uh, how about on the iPhone? It works on the iPhone too, yes. Okay, I did not know that. Excellent, excellent. I love this. Yes. Okay, Stephen's saying that he uses that Zoom feature uh, and enables it when he's trying to teach somebody, even if he's sitting side by side with them, because when you say to somebody, okay, just click on the time machine icon, it's not gonna do anything for him, but if I can, I can go like this and you know, really sarcastically show them what I'm pointing at, then they're gonna go, okay, I see where it is. Especially if you have your pointer small. You can make your pointer bigger, you can make it like this keycaster thing makes the little bleak showing where I'm typing. But that would also be really uh, handy. I use it a lot in presentations like over Zoom or, or uh, you know, helping a family member. Yeah. Hey, we'll be able to point at our iPhones too. When we mirror our iPhones on screen, we'll be able to point to it. One of the, I find, Teaching people remotely is such an interesting problem because you have to actually picture yourself in their kitchen while they're talking. I was working with a friend of mine and she couldn't figure out how to do something. And I said, well, just you know, move your finger on the trackpad over to here, this is what you're doing. She goes, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And my son walked in and it was actually the mother of a friend of his and he knew her really well. And he said, Melanie, look down at your, at your computer. There's a, a rectangle on it, get your finger on that. She was on the side of the computer. She didn't know where the trackpad was. And it, you got, when you dial yourself back to that, you're like, whoa, that really makes this task challenging. So you have to picture yourself in their head and where they might be and what they know so far. I mean, it was, she mostly knows where it is, but it just that one time her finger wasn't on it. And uh, I always remember that saying, wow, that's hard to do remote support. All right, what do we have next? Oh no, I already used up this one. Command delete when closing a file. One of my favorite ones. All right, you've been seeing me go in and out of my, uh, my uh, folders here, and I use, uh, I can never remember the name of it. I like column view. That's my default, and it's the right one. If you're using a different one, you're wrong, Steve. <clears throat> so let's go back to NoSilicast weekly files. And the reason I like it is because I can navigate over here. I can use my arrow keys if I want to. I can go down to storage analysis. I can, now I've just drilled all the way down and I can see it all on one screen. But some people think that a better way to do this is in uh, list view. And I hate this view. 
I hate it so much. But let me go back in here, go to list view. By the way, did you know you can do these with keystrokes? You can say, so this is command three is, is column view. Command two is list view. Command one is icons. Command four is cover flow that nobody uses, right? All right, so I'm gonna go back to command two. Let's say I wanna drill down into that folder. I'm gonna go to no silicast holding. I'm gonna go to st storage analysis. Uh, actually, no, this would be more fun. Let me start from documents. So we're gonna go to documents. And then I think it's, uh, oh, let's go down. I think I put it in pod feet. This is why I have to keep stuff in the sidebar. I'm gonna go to no silicast. And then I've got uh, no silicast weekly files. You see how bad I am at all this? And now I'm down to no silicast holding. There's my storage analysis. Can't see it all on screen, but you go do you if you really like that view. Now this is a mess, right? This is terrible. Watch what I can do. I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna click uh, pod feet. I just folded the whole mess up. Want to see it all open? They're all open. Option and click on that Chevron. Open. Oh, it's spinning. It's having so much trouble. This is in iCloud, so that's fun. But do you see how it, it did all of those folders at once? I love that because I can go over to Steve's computer and I can hit option and just close them all up. <laughs> When he's not looking. Oh, does anybody here use this view? People like list view? Why? Why? It's more like Windows. What's that? It shows the date. In a lot of folders, I keep it sorted by modified dates so that I can find the files quickly that I most Okay. So. The command one, command two. That, I just found out that works on the iPad. Uh, command one, command two works on the iPad. Oh, in, in fi the files app? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I like it. I, I mean, I do like seeing the date and time, but you can, you can still group by last added date. You know, you can still do that within, within the right view. <laughs> I mean, nobody uses cover flow, right? No. Really? All right. I did hear one use case. If you're looking for some images, yeah, you can get to them easier this way. That's true. That's true. I'm afraid to hit any of these documents. I don't know what they are. Um, all right. I'm going to go back to the right view and get rid of that grouping. Now, I'm pretty sure there's, uh, I think there's some keystrokes to do these two, but I can never remember what they are. So I always do those from the group menu up there. If you don't see the group menu up there, if you right click on the top of pretty much any window on the Mac, you can go into customize toolbar and you can go get different things to add them. You can add spaces. Uh, you see, I've got a couple of uh, spaces in the way here. If I wanted iCloud up there, I could drag iCloud. Ooh, boy, that didn't grab hold of that very well, did I? Uh, go back up to here. I can drag it up and put it into, my, uh, into the top of my finder window and I can click done. Now I, I don't need that file. But if I want to, and I want to get rid of it, I can hit the option, or sorry, I right clicked on that, customize toolbar, and then I can just drag it back out. You also notice that you can move things around in here when it's wiggling like that. But what is it? Is it, I think it's the command key if you hold it down, you can drag these things around too. You don't have to use the, uh, you don't have to open that to get, go ahead and move things. Anybody here put things up in their finder toolbars? few people. I, I don't use it a lot. It's pretty tailored, but like, I like to open audio files in the Fission app. So wherever I am, I want to be able to drag it up onto that instead of right click and go over and open with and blah, 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 or uh, resetting every file to open, audio file to open in the same thing. So I like to use that. Um, have you ever, what did I say? I picked a folder to do this because this is a really dangerous thing. Um, Ah, no silicast holding, that's where we were gonna go. If I go back to weekly files, no silica, oh gosh, that's the wrong view. No silicast holding. Have you ever done a select all and then you thought, oh, I wanna do a get info on this file. So I, I either right click get info or you do a command I to get info and you do this. All right, so this works in any finder window and these are actually our finder windows. If, if you hold down the option key and click one of them, they all go away. Well, no, first you have to wait for 
Five minutes, I'm fully oh, yeah. <laughs> Marina points out, you, first you have to wait for them all to open before you go do the option click. But the option key is a really good thing to experiment with. Um, I have a whole series of tips of all the different places I use the option key. It's so handy. If you're just messing around, just hold down the option key and see what kind of menus change. Like, I don't have a great use for this, but if you look at the Wi-Fi menu, it looks like this. But if I hold the option key down and click it, I get a whole bunch of other stuff. And, uh, you know, Dave Hamilton knows what RSSI is. I have no idea what that is, but apparently that's an important thing to look at sometimes. And that's how you get to it, is you hold the option key down. So I decided not to do the option key ones because there's just so many places you can use it. But again, with that QR code, if you follow through, you will eventually get to one of the tips that talks about the option key. Oh, so the tiny tips are blogs uh, posts one through eight. If you start at post eight, you get a list of all of them. But if you start at one, you have to go to the bottom of the screen to get to the next one, next one, next one, next one. I, Adam's giving me a funny look. I was just wondering why. Well, because they don't actually have a lot of value. If you go to, if you go to the first one, the names are just tiny tips one, tiny tips two, tiny. So it's not like you know what they are. So you get, go across the bottom. When you get done reading the first one, you get to the second one, the third one. But by the time you get to the end, you're like, well, I don't, I don't want to go backwards all the way through them. I, mean, I suppose I could put it at the top of all of them, but it seems a little reductive. All right. Oh, I just noticed Dave is here. You want to tell us what, uh, what RSSI stands for? John. Oh, John knows too. John F. Braun, what does RSSI and Wi-Fi stand for? What's that for? What is it? Relative signal, strength indicator. Relative signal strength indicator. All right. Well, good. All right. This one is, is a tip. That I, I like this, but I've got a pet peeve about it now because they broke something in it. Um, let's see which, uh, oh yeah. Let's do a new finder window. I've got a folder uh, called HD docs and in here I've got Docsify, there it is. Let's say, wait, why did I pick that folder? One moment, please. Um, all right, so when you first open folders, sometimes they look like this. They're, they're shrunk up, they're too narrow, or worse yet, they're, sometimes they're like this and you'd like go over to that one and all of a sudden you scroll over and you can't see the stuff on the left and it drives you crazy. You can go back in here and grab this little handle down at the bottom and you can scroll it over and let me scroll back over and scroll that one that way and then you can scroll this one this way. Or let's go back and mess it up again. Or you can do my favorite trick, the option key and double click. Actually, no, you just double click. I think just double click. If I double click it, it just right size those columns. Actually, it only right size that one. Maybe that's why it's option. Let's do option double click on this one. Nope. Probably should look at my notes and see what it is. Okay, wait, that's on the next page. Hold, please. It is, it's option double click on it. Oh, I was holding control. Option double click and they all right sized. So by hand, you can drag that thing, you can double click on one to get it or option double click. Now what drives me crazy is the save as menu. I'm just gonna show you my pet peeve. Uh, actually, no, it was in this one. Uh, let's open this up again. Let's go to our save as menu. Hopefully it'll be messed up like I think it will be. And you see how these are truncated? My left sidebar is all there, but why are those truncated? Why is that not right sized? And why can I not tell it stay right sized? I have worked so hard to write an automation to fix this, to have it automatically do it, or like a, a, a keystroke I could do in Keyboard Maestro. If anybody solves that for me, I will love you forever. Dave, any ideas? Oh, he just gave me the shrug emoji. This is in the, in the open. Dialogue. The save as or open with, yeah. Um, I know in the column view, you could right click on the divider and you get a bunch of options. For in the size column size view, size. oh, you saying like, like the little in that, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing yeah, there, right. but nothing here. Only in the so I could take it and I could do that, but it's not, it's not even letting me go wide enough. And I, that's, I need to know what that file, that folder is called. What? I have an answer. What? <laughs> he says go to list view but you would still be wrong because it's the left sidebar that would have been funny if that fixed it but sadly no did i yeah that took about a minute 
It drives me crazy, and it's every single time I do a save as. That's been bothering me for like two OS's worth. It's like, why they broke that? And yes, I have gone to apple.com slash feedback and suggested an improvement to that. All right, if somebody could automate that for me, that would be awesome. All right. So another thing that I mess around, or that I do, is with this window title icon, if you click on it, nothing happens. But if you command click on it, it shows you your path. Now that is kind of silly here because I've already got this path down below, but let's go down into uh, these weekly files, no silicas holding, let's get down into storage analysis again. I can't read all the stuff at the bottom, but if I hover over it, I can read individual ones. But if I use the command key on that, I can see the entire path and I can read all of the names more, more quickly when it's a really buried path. You can also simply go like this and jump up to a, a folder above and you're up above. Uh, if I go back into, uh, let's see, where's my NoSilicast weekly folders? Let's go back into here. Let's go back into storage analysis. I can also do that same thing down here. If I just click on it, I can go up to that upper folder. So those two ways of seeing the path bar are real handy for jumping around real quickly if you bury things as deeply as I do. Most days I can't tell you where that NoSilicast weekly fi files folder even is uh, if it wasn't in my sidebar. Oh, do we have an answer, another answer? Going back to that one you said you wanted Yeah? Yeah, he's suggesting dialogue def There's a suggestion to download uh, default folder X and I uh, because it solves that left folder uh, that left sidebar column problem, but that doesn't give me a consistent experience across with the finder windows the way I like them. So I actually have chosen not to do that. Uh, I didn't know it could do that, but when I tested it the last time I didn't didn't favor having two different ways to see it. Uh, yeah, another comment. Okay. All right. So. Whoop. Yes. Back to the I save as file. The right side of that window. And make it wider. Yeah, and then it'll let you resize it further. Okay, and then you can resize it further. Yes, that does work. Good. Thank you. But I have to do that every single time. Yep. Every single time. Let's see. Let's let's even with the same file. Let's see if it's still broken. Save as. Okay, that time it's good. Now we'll quit and open it up. Like, oh, why not just stick too? It could just stick. It just, it could. They could choose to have it save the same view. You know what sticks? It sticks that time. <laughs> okay, Jill says it does stick in Windows. So Apple should steal from Windows. Of course, now it's sticking. You know it's because the minute I turn my back on it, though, it's not going to stick. Yeah, true artists steal. There you go. Uh, right. Um, also, going back to the path discussion, so if you have room and you find our menu bar, then you can put a button there that's just the path button. Uh, so uh, Marina is saying that if you have room in your menu bar, if you haven't put too much... Not the menu bar, the, the, the toolbar. In the toolbar. Sorry, toolbar. She's saying that if we go into the customized toolbar, there's a, there's a button. Customized toolbar? Yeah, I just got it up. Okay, there can be a path button. Anybody see it? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you could put a path button there. And this is something you use often. Yeah, so now I've put a path button up there and now I can click it and I can see the path. But I can also just do it with, if you can, you know, that's a good point that I wanted to, I'm going to make a lot in my uh, presentation on Sunday is uh, if you're a keystroke junkie, remembering to hit command and click it is perfectly easy. But a lot of people, that kind of thing just doesn't stick. So having the path bar just by modifying your uh, your toolbar, that's a good way to do it. If they, you can't remember that, it's right there. That's great. Then your other hand is free to do other things. Yeah, then your other hand is free to uh, do other things. Okay, can I scratch my head and do this at the same time? There you go. Look at that. I like it. I like it. Yeah, good. I'm getting, I'm learning a lot. I'm still going to take it out because I can remember keystrokes, but if you don't. So here's another uh, uh, fun little tip. Let's close all of these. Watch what I'm going to do. Option click. All the windows are closed. If I want to modify my, um, my uh, dock, I can go up to the Apple logo. I can go to system settings. I can go to display uh, desktop and dock. And then I can look at the dock and I can change how big it is. I can do this. I can change the magnification. If I want magnification on or off, I can change the position on the screen. I can do all these different things. But it turns out if you hover over the dock, 
and you right click right around where this vertical splitter is, it's a good place to do it. You can do it all here. Let's see, can I zoom? Oh yeah, I can, look at that. All right, so I can go, I can turn hiding on and off. I can turn magnification. I can change the position on screen. It must be over there. And I can do minimize whether you use genie or scale. And then I can also get to the rest of the options by going into dock settings from there. And that opens it up in system settings. The other reason you want to learn this, have you ever had the problem where you've got your laptop hooked up to uh, a secondary screen or you've got a, a, a Mac with two screens and the wrong one has started showing like when you do a spotlight or you do the command tab to switch between apps? Have you ever had that move to the wrong screen? Well, please don't tell me it's only me. It happens to me like three times a day. Okay, if you simply go to your dock on the screen you want it to be on and just go up and down a little bit to change the size, it switches it back to that screen. A stupid workaround, but I do it like three times a day. It's always jumping over to the other monitor and I don't know why, but I use that one all the time. And a handy way to just increase the size of your uh, stuff in your dock. Ooh, I think I might have ta taught Dave Hamilton one. He gave me a thumbs up. That's good. So, uh, Question. Okay, this is a, this is a good tip. Um, uh, what he's suggesting is to go into displays and then if you go into a range, and this is such a weird thing, I can't do it because of the way we're mirroring right now, but imagine those are two side by side. You see that one of them has this little menu bar on it. You can take that little menu bar and drag it between the two. And I already have it set that way and it's switching anyway. So you could do that to bring it back. Yes? That's only the case if you're in the old style mode. What do you mean old style mode? Um, I forget what the settings call, but the default now is that you have menu bars on all screens. Oh, the default is that you have, oh, is that you have menu bars on all screens. Yeah. I think it still works that way because I'm, I'm pretty sure I have menu bars on all screens. I mean, I could mess up this whole video setting right now if you want me to, to test it. <laughs> Let me download default folder X and look at that too while we're at it. That would be good. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's such a weird little trick. That, I don't know if that's in my full tiny tips, but that's one like, really? That's how you change which the main menu, the main screen is. That one is so buried. I don't know how anybody ever stumbled across it. That's like the word of mouth thing. Nobody else, uh, no other way you'd get to it. All right, did anybody want to teach me anything else on the displays while I'm in there? All right, we're good. All right. Oh, we, uh, we were, I was showing how in the, uh, in the finder window, how we could uh, rearrange the toolbar items using the holding the command key. Holding the command key in your uh, menu bar does the same thing. Let me control scroll up here so you can see that nice and big. If I hold down my command key and I grab on an icon, I can rearrange these. Now I'm running uh, Bartender and whether you use Bartender or one of the other apps that's uh, fit to replace it, or if you're not running Bartender, this works in all, uh, whether you have them running or not, it still works. Um, you can move almost everything. There's a few things you can't move. You can't move whatever that, what's that thing called? Control, the center. control center, yeah. And you can't move uh, the clock, but you can move other things. These are all third-party apps. I can move all of those around. That's Bartender there. So especially when you've got a lot of uh, menu bar icons and you wanna, wanna um, rearrange them, that's a, a good way to do it. Did I miss anything? What else do I need to know about that? <laughs> Darn it, I want one on every one. All right, we're getting close to the end here, guys. I got just a couple more. Uh huh. Option click. So you mean the tip I did a little while ago, John F. Braun? Okay, yeah. John F. Braun, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> right. But I, I, that's why we asked what RSSI stood for. Actually, isn't that when your wrist hurts? Oh, okay. RSI. There we go. All right. There we go. All right. Let's, I'm going to bring this up. Uh, a presentation just you can bring up any any app you want on the Mac this is going to work uh, if you want to change the color of something uh, actually let me bring up 
bring up Safari again, get me some, I need something with color on it. I don't know, let's just go to uh, podfeet.com. Yes, I'm too lazy to type those six letters. Let's say I wanted to get uh, this specific color of blue, but I wanted to get it in Keynote. So I've got the color that I want to I want to find. Actually, I need to I'm going to have to shrink things up. Let's get get this in the middle here because I need to be able to see both these at the same time. I'm going to go into this text here and select it. And I'm going to go to text and I've got text color. I can you know, I can choose from the palette from whatever application I'm in, but I can also use the color wheel is always there. And where did it go? There you are. All right, let's uh, go to crayons, for example. So I can be sitting there going, okay, I want to find the color I want. I can try to mess around. Uh, let's go in the color wheel. Let's bring this down. I can try to try to find the exact color. But on this color wheel tab, if you go down to the eyedropper, you can grab color outside of this application. You can go to any application. You can go to your desktop. So I can take that thing. And I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to say that's the exact color of blue I want. Now I click it, I've selected that color. Isn't that cool? It's everywhere. It's any, any application you're in that's a, you know, a standard Mac app, probably these weird Electron apps are doing it wrong, but uh, any standard Mac app will let you do that. You can grab any color. Yes, Steve Sobo. Then you can save that color. Oh wait, don't, don't do my next tip. So, <laughs> but but you're, you're only about eight days since I learned this tip and I and I haven't actually maybe you can help me do this correctly but I don't know if you noticed when I went into let's say color palettes you can create your own color palettes I learned this last week didn't he? how many people knew you could create your own oh man I'm behind uh, I what I can't figure out is how do I now go get that color to put it into this color palette how do I add it to mine I can't see them both at the same time. Drag it to the bottom and drag it back up. So I, I don't have it right now. I guess if I'm in here and I go in and I grab it. No, that, I didn't get it. Hang on. Click on the, and I go get that color. So now I can drag it into here. Okay. So that's good. So let's, let's go my baby blue. Yeah, drag it over to the tiny squares and then you'll have it across. Okay, drag it into there. Yep. Okay, but then it's available no matter where I am. That's nothing yeah, so you can move it to the other Oh, you're saying it's a holding container to go get it and to drag it up into your own? Yes. Cool, because I wanted to write up this tiny tip, but then I couldn't figure out I couldn't figure out how I got the red, white, and blacks in there. I couldn't remember how I did it. Okay, cool. So if we go into like let's say I just wanna one of the ones that bugs me, the reason I have white in there is why is white at the bottom? Why do you have to scroll to get to white? I need white all the time. You always have to, when you're in, uh, let's see, color palette here, or in the, no, not crayons, I want apple. I always have to scroll to get to white or I have to go down and get the window and drag it. Why would you not make the window big enough to show the, the standard set? Why would you not do that? But so if I wanted that one, I, can I drag that into there? Oh, look at that. And then I could put it into mine. Yay! That's what I wanted to know how to do. And I was going to ask a uh, physics nerd, Graham, the guy that did the physics short that you saw go by, he did it to, uh, teaches that. And I was like, how did he do it, though? Um, yeah, Steve. I, I can't see. When you dragged it into the palette and the kind of the list view, it gave a title. Did you, did you title that? Uh, my white? white blue. Yes, I changed that title. So, yeah, when I, let's, let's do another one to show what I did. So I went over it. Let's, oh, you got to click it first. Click it. I'm dragging. No, click it. This time, click it. All right. So I click that, and now I drag that one up into here, and it just calls it mine because it's in the folder mine. So I, I just hit enter and call that my dark blue. I don't need to call them dark blue on mine because it's already in mine, but that's just what I started doing. I can't believe I didn't know that, and you guys all knew that. Not all of you. Half of you didn't know it, so I don't feel like I'm only, I'm in the middle of the class there. Will it convert them if you put them in, what in? Oh, the hex? Will it give you the hex is the question. So uh, let's see, where, oh, where do I get to hex again? These? I don't know, I can't remember. Where do I see hex? No, not in the color wheel. Yeah, where's the option key? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's in accessibility. <laughs> the slider one, drop down menu, CMYK? No, what do I want? No, I don't see hex in that. HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness, I think it is? Yeah, no. Ah, there it is. Okay, so we found it. So now what's the question? Okay, so now if I drag that up, but that's not a list, so there's no place to drag it in to see it. So I don't think it will tell you the hex there. I think it... Okay, if I click on it, there it is. Okay, yeah, if you've got it in your blocks down, you can't drag it into that one, but if it's down in the blocks, yeah, there's the hex color. Boy, that one took a village, right? What happens if you're in your mind and option click or option right click? It? Okay, what happens if I'm in option? Does it give you any additional? Any right click, right click, command click? I bet. That would be a good place to have an option key and then show you all the different. Be a nice place for them to add an option key there, Adam saying, yeah, yeah, to see everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool that you can get to that anywhere. That when, The first time I dragged the uh, eyedropper outside, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I'm coloring outside the lines. This is amazing. <laughs> I like that. All right, I've got, I've actually got one more here. Um, let's see, let me quit that. That did an optional save. Let's see, uh, what was the last one? Oh, in system settings, uh, ah, sorry. Okay, never mind. S Y S. There we go. One of the things that I is hiding in plain sight, and you probably all know this one, but uh, let me get rid of this. But it really kind of surprised me the first time I saw it. If I click on my built-in display, oh no, it's not going to work. Oh, there we go. So. When you, this is the cam link, so that's that display up there. But uh, you're looking around here and, and you only see a limited number of resolutions. I have an app called uh, uh, Parallels Toolbox that has a lot of really cool tools in it. One of them is, is a, the ability to select all kinds of crazy resolutions. Some people use Switch at ResX, which was like a $100 application when it came out. There's a little toggle here that says Show All Resolutions. And in this case, I didn't get a lot more, but on my display at home, it's a ton of resolutions that are really, really handy. And I'm not gonna be able to show it on here, but look, uh, because the way we've got this set up, but I wrote it down. If you've got a MacBook, anything that has a notch, and if the notch bothers you, like you can't see your menu bar items across the top, look for a second resolution that's just a few pixels smaller, like 37 pixels smaller. On the MacBook, four, I'm on a 14 inch MacBook Pro, 1512 by 982 has the notch, but 1512 by 945, 37 pixels smaller, the notch goes away. So what it does is it just drops it down. Now you're losing a little bit of screen, right? Because now you've got it covered up, but it's 37 pixels. And if the notch bugs you for whatever reason, too many menu bar items, uh, burns your eyeballs, you can't stand it, that gets rid of it just to go to that one 37 pixels smaller. And they're both, they both say, um, uh, well, I can't show any, what is it? What is it? it says retina in parentheses, they're both retina. So it's exactly the same. Uh, I use that one all the time when I'm doing screencast online videos because I can't have anything missing when I'm doing the tutorials. Yes? It has to be like download an open source app, but there's also a great open source utility you probably know about, RDM. No. GitHub, it's free. Okay, and let me repeat what you're saying before we get too far. Uh, the person in the back of the room there has, what's your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. Oh my God, you are kidding me. That's who I thought it was. This is Kaylee. I've never met Kaylee in real life and we've been friends for a year. Oh my gosh. I thought I recognized your voice, but I didn't want to guess. Oh, sorry. That was a big moment for me. We've been friends forever and never met in real life. She's from Japan for crying out loud. All right. Uh, so she said not to be an open source junkie, but I am an open source junkie. I love that. On GitHub, there's an open source application called RDM. RDM. And what does that stand for? Uh, I don't know. Retina Display Manager. Retina Display Manager. It, we'll put it in the menu bar, and it'll show you all your, all your resolutions that are possible, as well as 120 hertz, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, et cetera. It shows you all of your possible, I, I gotta repeat before I forget my memory being so short. It shows you all of your possible resolutions as, as a menu bar item? Yes. That is so cool. Should, but it allows you to override some of the 
defaults. You can overwrite some of the defaults and get things, uh, let's see, this one, uh, Avi Brazil slash RDM. That might be it, there's RDM Builder. Oh yeah, easily set Mac Retina display to unsupported resolutions. <laughs> oh, that's been archived. Because it hits stable, it's a one trick pony. Okay, that's pretty cool. What was, that? what was the joke? I don't want to miss a joke. He said it's not malware. It's not malware. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so this is showing you all the ones you can do. The lightning bolt, does that mean Danger Will Robinson? Oh, that means Retina. Okay, cool. I love, I love me some free and open source. Keycaster, the thing I'm using to show my, you know, when I'm hitting the, the characters, that was open source. I downloaded that the other day, works a champ. All right, we haven't hit 90 minutes yet. Does anybody have uh, any tips they wanted to share? I have a question. All right, Marina has a question. Oh, we actually have mics. If I'm repeating, I'll repeat it. Yeah, but the, the recording people want to know, want to hear too is why we do that. Are there any scenarios where option right click does something different than, I don't know that I've ever tried option and right click at the same time. That's sort of, that's like saying, well, that's option control. So if there's anywhere option control works, that's the, the right click is the control key, right? So if you, if you create some sort of keyboard shortcut, that's option control. If you create a keyboard. Oh, yeah, so the question is if you have, like let's say you've got a keystroke that's option control S, could you option two finger tap S and get it? I don't know. That's a good question. I can't think of something to try it on, so I'm not sure. That's a, a lesson for the student. Yes, another question. So the question is, I have an iPad and it doesn't have a command key without a keyboard. Is there a way to get the command key up without a keyboard? <laughs> I just ripped my, uh, my uh, screen off, or my keyboard off my screen. Um, I don't know, what would I go into? Not mail, find something not dangerous. Let's say I wanna type. Boy, that's a good one. Anybody know? That might be a stump the geek. Tap and hold. Ta so on home, I've got other keyboards, but none of them are, would give me that. That's a good question. I have always used a keyboard on my iPads. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's an open source app. No, you can't run those on your iPad. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Any other comments? Yes. Have you tried Moom? I am a huge fan of Moom, and I believe it's in my menu bar here. Okay. Do you try that for your um, issue with the uh, fire window? Oh, the question is, can Moom maybe uh, mess around with your, uh, oh, maybe I'm not running it on this one. I don't think it can, but it's worth checking. The fine one. The, so the problem she's trying to solve is my save as, where the left column is too narrow. Um, yeah. So Moom, uh, I actually am not running it. Uh, I don't have it on this computer. So Moom allows you to save windows in a certain configuration. So you can just say, this is my, this is my daily work. I want my, my Safari here and I want mail here and I want messages down here. And it memorizes that position and you can just grab it with a keystroke. Uh, and, uh, but she was wondering whether that would allow me to have my save as menus all memorized. I think it has to be a specific window, not any old window in any old application. I don't know that it would. That yeah. might be worth contacting the developer. Mm. That, she suggested contacting the developer. That's an interesting question. Yeah, Kaylee. So based on the testing I've been doing during the presentation, the save as customization is per application. Yeah. At least with Apple applications and applications that use the default save as. So you have to configure it every time. But every time I, like I tested pages and keynote and text edit, every time I closed the app and reopened it, it would return to what it was. And I, think maybe I don't think it's... You can have multiple 
So Kaylee's, Kaylee's saying that the save as shape and size of the dialog box and that left sidebar is per application and is saved per application. But I guarantee you I've done it. Well, I, I don't guarantee you. I'm not completely positive, but I'd be willing to bet that doesn't survive a reboot. Uh, I, I have Might have to do, here, I'll reboot right now. Um, yeah, I, that, that'd be fabulous because I would be willing to do it in every one. But, you know, but what I put in my sidebar is changing, right? Sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long. I'd need to do it every time. It's like, why doesn't it just let me see the width? Or at least double click that little line. I'd, I'd be willing to double click the line. I would option click. I'd do anything, but just, I don't want to sit and drag and pull the window over to the right so that I can make it wider so I can see the left. You saw how tedious that was. But uh, that'd be worth testing. Yeah, Steve. Me? Yes. Oh, uh, so Steve says he thinks he's found a way for uh, us to get the command key on an iPad. <laughs> Wait, well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Guess which section, Guess which section it's in. He's going to say accessibility. accessibility. Really? Okay, hang on. Let me bring it up on my iPad while we're talking. Uh, uh, I'm going to go to accessibility. Now, where do we go? Uh-oh. Keyboard shortcuts? Zoom controller? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going down to, where's keyboard? Keyboard, keyboard, keyboard. Actually, I could, I could switch the display. Would that wreck anything, Roger, if I switch to the iPad to show this? No, we can try. I'm going to use this. Yeah, we can try. Let's see what happens. Let's try, Let's see if I can do this. All right, did that get my iPad? Oh, stage manager. Do I want to use stage manager? Yeah, use screen mirroring. There we go. Is it going to work? Oh, oh, here it goes. It's trying. Okay, my, it's, it went to my lock screen. Huh. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm in accessibility. Where do I go? Keyboards. Okay. Full keyboards access. And turn it on. Turn it on. And then commands. Tap commands. Okay. Uh, then it says tap a command and press a custom key combination to assign it. Oh, jeez. So contextual menu, actions, device. Oh, it may not be. Oh, keyboard gestures? No, two finger. What about two finger touch? Would that be? No, that's uh, that's the control key. Oh, so close. Keep fooling with it. Hey, you can do a shortcut. Let's say we'll write a shortcut to hold down the. Wow. All right. Well, that looked like we were getting close. Snatched out of the, the arms of victory at the last minute. Any other? Yeah, Bruce. All right, Bruce is going to obey correctly, like Linda wouldn't. Or no, it was Marina was misbehaving, not Linda. So it, it starts to get a little bit outside. Is that Mike live, Roger? Yeah. Turn it on. There we go. Now we got a light. No. No. We turned off. We turned off the. Oh, we turned off the external sound. Okay, holler your question. Should come up in the recording. Many of the things that you show have a many of the things that you show have a default rights command, so you can do them from a command line. I don't nuke and pave as often as you seem to do, <laughs> but particularly when I'm, I'm trying to set some stuff up, I've got a script that I keep. I'm actually using Chamois, but I can keep it in some other places. So once I get some basics set up, I can go through that script. And the few things that you know I have where I have a kind of default right, I've got a a reminder in there that sort of displays and said, here's where you go find this thing. <laughs> so, so, so this is kind of a generalized tip to start using defaults, right? I think there's a website that is like defaultrights.com or something like that. These are, these are small text commands that set things a certain way. So uh, Bruce, your assignment is to find the default rights that makes that left column in the save as dialog box the right width. Oh, Kaylee's, Kaylee's. Sorry? It survived a reboot. 
So you're saying if I open every application, do a save as, and at least set it to where I can read my stock folder widths. All right, I'm going to try it. Maybe that'll save my sanity. Can I open one? No, it's already gone. <laughs> one more piece of miscellany. One more miscellany. Okay, so Jill, Jill asked whether, or no, who was it? Was it Steve? Somebody asked, was this a head nod? Maybe Steve uh, Sobo was, was the path bar? Okay, you, Ron was the obnoxious person who said that, uh, saying, was this, was this a head nod to the, to the Windows users? And it was, so w you said it was Leopard it came in? Macworld in 2008 yeah. came up with this new feature. It was right around the time that they were doing the switcher ads, so it may very well have been uh, the head nod. Hey, maybe that's when they started stealing successfully and we all should be happy about it, right? All right, anything else? Boy, it's almost like I timed this well. That's crazy, I should have practiced. All right, thank you very much for coming. I really enjoyed teaching you my tiny tips. <laughs> <laughs>